I say what ho, this is Brian, call me James Patrick Gardner, and you are listening to Ramble On Radio, episode number 43, the only Led Zeppelin podcast on this or any other known internets. And you can listen to us on, on, on iTunes, you can subscribe on iTunes, leave, leave, a, uh, um, uh, leave a review. If you go into iTunes, leave a review, helps out. You can listen to us on Spreaker. You can check us out. Uh, check it out on YouTube at I am Brian Dammit, um, and uh, uh, Spreaker I think might be under that same handle, or might be under Ramble on Radio. I'm not sure. Like us on Spreaker. Um, like us uh, by us, I mean me. <laughs> it's, I do it all. Uh, like on Spreaker, and uh, also on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. Um, and uh, occasionally I post stuff and I let you know when there's updates and, and follow me on Twitter as well uh, I'm there and I respond to people and and that's that 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 okay so I'm going to talk about Jimmy Page today but uh, first off Robert Plant announced a bunch of tour dates um, I talked last time a bit about what's up for two that well, not a bit but it was about what's up for 2014 and significantly, Robert Plant, there was some tour dates thought at the time that were unofficial. He made them official the next day. Uh, so I guess I guess me talk, me going on about it um, pressured the Plant camp to, to release details. That's that's what happened, folks. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. They don't admit it. They won't answer my emails, but boy. They're paying attention. So anyway, he's, it, it starts in the middle of June up in uh, Northern Europe, um, Sweden, I think. I don't have the dates in front of me. And it actually runs through to a stop in Glastonbury, believe it or not, in, but not the festival. In August, the Glastonbury uh, um, Abbey. I was wanted to say cathedral, but Abbey, which actually looks like a really good... It's, a, it's, an old, it's, a, it's part of the festival. It's funny. Eh? The festival is the end of June. The Glastonbury Abbey Festival is in August, but they are part of the same group of festivals, um, like Glastonbury Inc., <laughs> or whoever puts this on, puts on both. And if you go to the Glastonbury website for the festival, they do have a, a part of their website it focuses on this uh, festival. So Robert Plant is appearing at Glastonbury this year, but not the big festival, the little festival two months later. Um... He is that weekend. However, it's worth noting that weekend he is playing in Cork on I think the Friday, either Thursday, Thursday or Friday, and the Cork is is now it's a nine hour trip because you got to go to Dublin across. So for the trucks, right, got to go to Dublin, shoot across into Wales, and then down to Glasnevin. But if you look at it as the crow flies, it's right across the uh, Celtic Sea. It's just. Uh, it's probably, if you can get a direct flight, I assume Cork and Glasbury both have airports, you know. If you can get a direct flight, it's probably about a 20-minute flight. It's really close. So, um, even a direct boat is probably just a couple hours, you know. Um, so, so who knows, maybe he could, you know, but I, I wouldn't expect that. Um, that's the only thing he's got on that weekend, too, is Cork. So maybe he pops up at Glastonbury. I wouldn't expect it. Maybe as a, a fan. Uh, he's also hitting Japan for two dates. That was in August. And he was talking about uh, North American dates as well. Nothing announced. There's more dates coming. There's, there's lots more coming. I haven't even checked today if they've released new. They were, there was talk about them releasing new dates as things go. Uh, so that's that's new in Robert Plant's world. Um, man, I'm, I'm having a quick peek at the, the Twitter here to see if you know you got to follow Led Zeppelin news on Twitter. All the all the he's way on top of this sort of stuff like you wouldn't believe. Um, now of course he posts just a lot of selfies of people with Jimmy Page and stuff, which um, I wouldn't I wouldn't put on the website. But Twitter's a different beast, and he's running a different show over there. So that's that's what makes it all interesting, right? Uh, and believe me, he's full of news. James Cook is the guy who runs Led Zeppelin News on Twitter, and believe he's full of news. He's he's on top of things. He seems to know some people. He seems to get some back inside information pretty quick. And he doesn't miss if something hits the internet. He doesn't miss it. He's got it really fast, uh, which, which tells me that on Twitter people are kind of sending him links, going, "Hey, check this out. Check this out." Um, He's on top of things. 
All right. So happy 70th birthday, James Patrick Page. Jimmy, to his friends and fans. Um, he turns he turns 70 on uh, on the 9th, Thursday the 9th. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what day this is because it's really close to when I did the last one. But um, uh, I posted on his birthday on, on on the Facebook page. What would you do? I decided to do a, instead of, what you know, you're going, what album are you going to listen to? I'm going to make a, a playlist on my iPad. The best of, you know, a best of Jimmy. And uh, so I posted on Facebook, and I, and, and I kind of said Zeppelin and post-Zeppelin. Forgot all about the Yardbirds, actually. Um, but what I didn't want to get, I kind of was ignoring the pre-Zeppelin, because I didn't want to get into the studio stuff. Now you're getting into look and see, you know, and then people would be saying, oh, you got to look, you got to find this song. Uh, you know, some obscure song somewhere. Um... But, you know, but uh, um, Wyatt, actually, Wyatt Brake uh, posted a list, and he kind of pointed out the Yardbirds, uh, things like Stroll On. Can you get Stroll On? I, that's a because I was looking for stuff from official releases, and I know Jeff Beck played in um, in um, uh, Train Kepper Rolling, which is what Stroll On really is. And Stroll On, they played it uh, in the Fellini movie uh, Blow Up. Uh, but there were some licensing issues or something, so they couldn't play Train Cap Rolling, so they played Stroll On. Or for you aficionados, Tall Cool One. <laughs> and, uh, um, <clears throat> but uh, Wyatt, listen, so can, I don't know, can you get that one? Um, I'm not sure if that's true or not, if you can. But uh, anyway, yeah, stroll on. I'm, you know, the Yardbirds. I ended up adding the Yardbirds to my list. Um, I had nothing from uh, Death Wish Two on my list. Um, Why I mentioned a couple. I, I just, and it's a case of uh, trying to remember. There was one or two songs I liked on that, but I was trying to remember what what they were, and I couldn't. And this this is the problem when you get into Jimmy Page's other career. Uh, either before or after, I have not listened to enough of it, or I haven't listened to it enough that I have solidly sunk in my brain. That's the song. Like all the Led Zeppelin stuff, I know, I know, I know, I know. Like that song, love that song. I can go through the song list and go, no, it, no, you know, no, no, no. I can pick every album apart, and there's not a song in there. I go, you know, I really don't know that album very well, that song very well. But I go through a solo album. And and I know wasting my time, and I know, and it's not that I haven't listened to it. It's that. Probably haven't listened to it enough that every song stands out of my brain, right? So, Waste of My Time stands out. Um, um, Prison Blues, for the very wrong reason, stands out. Um, so, there was, so that's, you know, that's kind of the problem I, I run into, ran into, and I did the same kind of problem I have with Robert Plant when we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Some of those albums I haven't listened to enough to really have a good handle on which songs are great songs, which ones are okay songs. You know, I know some of the songs for good or bad reasons. I've just heard them enough, or they've stuck in my brain for whatever reason. And there's a lot of stuff in the in the middle that it's just a case of having listened to it enough, not familiar enough, which is probably not what something I should be saying on a Led Zeppelin podcast. But but that happens, right? So Wyatt mentioned, for instance, the box. I completely forgot about the box of frogs, and so he mentions. Um, uh, oh, I, and I didn't write it down. Huh. A box of frogs. On. Now I have the box of frogs album he appears on. Uh, so I could have got that, and I, you know, I completely forgot about it. But then I, I, would, I think I've listened to it twice, right? So I, there's not one that would stand out as that's the song. Um, um, I had nothing, and I, I had nothing from the Honey Drippers on my list, and that was just an omission. Um, probably rocking at midnight would uh, would would make the list. Uh, but it was later on I kind of thought of it. And I thought, oh yeah, there's the, the he, he did a couple of solos on Honey Drippers. Definitely did the Rock and Midnight solo. Um, I'm trying to remember what other one he did. But I know he played on. Uh, I think it was two of those tracks. Um, so there's nothing from Luther, Luther's Rising. Uh, I don't know. If there's really a song on that that you would put in. Um, maybe, maybe not. Right. And of course, and Wyatt mentions Come with Me. Which was which was an interesting one. Um, I don't mind this. I mean, some people really hate it. I, I can tell you a couple of me story. He played that on Saturday Night Live. I have a friend, uh, my brother-in-law actually, who's a bit of a he. 
he's a bit of a Led Zeppelin. He kind of knows music a little bit here and there. He's, he's one of those guys that uh, loves it when he hears it, but is preferably, you know, uh, wouldn't sit and listen to a podcast like this, for instance. Or wouldn't Certainly wouldn't make one. But knows what he likes and, and likes it a lot. You know, kind of the average music fan, right? And uh, he, he, he was watching... When he, he always talks about Jimmy Page is just, you know, when you, when you come up, when Led Zeppelin comes up, he'll say, you know, Jimmy Page is just a god. He's, he's unbelievable. So much stage presence, so much just jaw-dropping. And he talks about, um, he got this impression, this is his opinion, based on Saturday Night Live when he did Come With Me. And he says, this guy comes out and he's rapping. And it was awful. And there's But there's Jimmy Page beside him. And he's, he says... It was jaw dry. He says the audience stood in a pl- you know, gave a standing ovation, and it was for Jimmy Page, not the song. He says it was jaw dropping watching him um, doing what he did beside this this weak ass stuff. Um, and 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 so yeah, come with me is an interesting one because it, it's um, it's a modern take on on a you know it, it's an interesting modern take on on what those guys were doing in a way and. Um, it is by no stretch a cashmere. It's no stretch as good as cashmere. It's an interesting, um, and and it is. It's got a power to it. It's got an oomph and a power. Cashmere that lick does, um, virtually on its own. That um, that come with me um, um, uh, manipulates, and and it's in a good way. Um, so I I think that's worthy of inclusion on the list, and uh, I didn't put it on mine. Mostly because I didn't think of it when I was making it, and this came after. Um, but I would consider putting it on the list. I would consider that. I played another car with my son, and I, it may be the only song I play all day, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so so this is what I wanted to do. I, I just wanted to go over my list, kind of talk about it casually. Uh, and if we get to some other stuff, we'll get to some other stuff. This, the same thing by applies to, um, oh, there is this, there's another list. And, um Maybe we'll start with that. There's a list on, I think it was Classic Rock Magazine, Jimmy Page's top 10 non-Zeppelin songs. Um, yeah, post-Led Zeppelin Jimmy Page songs, top 10 in Classic Rock Magazine. And here is what they had to say. Number 10, Radioactive. Uh, I will talk about that in a bit. Number 9, Easy Does It from Coverdale Page. Hmm, had some mic problems there, and I don't I don't know if it's everything sounds very different now, and I don't can you hear me okay? I don't know why I had these problems suddenly. How's that, guys? But uh I, well, everything sounds I don't know, it, it comes up once in a while. You get that it almost sounds like a jet taken off in the mic. And now, uh, believe me, in my little dungeon studio here, I, if you've seen the video from, um, uh, from when we did the contest, you know, it's, there's no room for a jet in here. <laughs> it's a pretty tight room. Uh, okay. Easy does it from Coverdale page. Um, and here's one of the deals. I, this is one of the ones I, every, every couple of years I grab this album and I listen to it and I love it. It's, it's got about, it's probably a 50, 50 album. Really. It's got, f- you know, f- five really good songs, great songs even, um, and five eh, eh, songs, and, uh, and I listen to it, you know, for a week, three or four or five times, and then it gets put away, and, and I forget about it, um, and so it's one of those ones, you know, and, and so I don't know the song Easy Does It, um, the only one from Outrider, uh, this was the one Robert Plant sang on, um, and I would, uh, yeah, I would take that, um, uh, well over something like like Prism Blues, which I, I... Funny thing about Outrider to me, and I may have mentioned this before, but I, I think it's it's such a strong album musically and such a weak album vocally and lyrically. And and it... it um, uh, it, it's really... It shows how important a guy like Robert Plant is to what Jimmy Page does, I think. When you listen to Prism Blues, what an amazing song completely and utterly ruined by mindless drivel about a weasel in his trousers. <laughs> it's awful. It's so, and you think, 
who is this 12 year old you let sing on your album and this amazing song and he cuts this incredible track and it's just wasted just wasted on a horrifically bad vocal performance with horrifically bad lyrics and so you know you you can mock the the hobbits and vikings and whatnot but what robert plant did was was create lyric a lyrical world that matched the musical world that jimmy page was creating and and the rest of the guys in, in zeppelin obviously um and actually there was a i posted on the on the facebook page on his birthday um a, a video from from when um uh, i wrote it down actually from class i was actually going to use it as an intro and i can't seem to get it off my computer so it's not gonna happen but if you hear the if you hear an intro this is what it is. It's, it's from Classic Rock Magazine's 2007 Awards. Jimmy Page receiving the Living Legend Award. And Robert Plant sits down and says, uh, and gives it all a tribute. It's about a two-minute tribute. Uh, and he mentions in it, he was always, he was always um, um, uh, proud of himself that he managed to match his lyrics to the music, that he managed to create a lyrical world that matched the musical world Jimmy was creating. And that's, uh, to me, Outrider really shows that, that the, the Robert Plant song is simple, basic, unsubtle and works really well and so many other songs on the album are are such great songs and they're just they don't um the person he let handle the microphone the per just ruined it just ruined it um so anyway but yeah the only one works uh someone to love from the firm this is another one firm's one of those bands the first album i listened to a few times and it had a couple songs that i really didn't like i did not like you lost that loving feeling the way they did it uh, there was something else I didn't like. So I kind of got put away, and I love, there's three or four songs on it I like. Um, I love Radioactive, but uh, a lot of the rest of it, 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 you know, just these couple of songs just made me go, ah, oh, okay, really, you know. <laughs> and, the same, and then their second album, I think I've listened to it three times. Um, uh, one of the things I don't like is uh, Tony Franklin's uh, bass work. Just don't, just don't. Um, and the fretless bass, I can live without, I'll tell you that right now. Although I have a bass in the back, I haven't played for years, and I've been I've been working on I've been doing guitar repair, um, and, I, and I'm, I'm actually thinking about converting it to a, a fretless um, just for the project because I don't play it that much anyway. So what the heck, right? Um, a blue train from Walking in the Clarksdale again, another album I don't know the songs on. Um, I, you know, every time I listen to it, I just I, I, I drift away. It, there's nothing interesting there to me. You know, it's, you put it on and you're kind of listening. Next thing you know, it's over and you kind of go, oh, okay. I don't really remember any of that. Um, uh, Midnight Moonlight is a firm song that I would, uh, yeah, I like that. That's a good one. Pride and Joy from Coverdale Page, I think is a great song. Um, is a, uh, the Truth Explodes, I've never heard it called this, by the way. The Truth Explodes, a.k.a. Yala from Page and Plant. And oh yeah, I, I love that first Page and Plant album. And uh, uh, one of the things I love about it is the two new songs, right? Um, uh, actually, there were four, right? Uh, Wonderful One, Wawa, and City Don't Cry. And City Don't Cry and Yalla were so good and such an example of how good these guys could be together. Uh, and Yalla especially, they're doing it in the market, right? And uh, the, everybody around clapping, and it's just got that steady beat that, that Page loves working her over. And, uh, and, yeah, I love that song. That's a great song. And that's a great example of how good these guys could have been uh, when they reunited. Um, yeah, what a pity. What a pity walking to Clarksdale is what it is. And, it, you know, and I don't know why that happened. Uh, there's just something about it that, that, I don't know, satisfaction guaranteed from the firm with the... Um, if I recall, the greatest slide solo on a beer bottle in a bar ever uh, from the, vi the video. <laughs> if you've seen the video, you know what I mean. He uh, grabs a beer bottle off somebody's table to do the solo. Um, it's a complete hack, you know. It's a complete hack up, right? But uh, yeah, that's but that's not that's an all right song indeed. Please read the letter from Walking Near Clarksdale. I added this one. I had to listen to it a couple of times. Go, okay, I'm going to add that to my list. So that's, anyway, that's Classic Rock's list. Um, uh, yeah, Ultimate Classic Rock's list. And I'll go over it again real quick. Radioactive, Easy Does It, Outriders, Only One, Someone to Love from the Firm, 
Blue Train from Walking Near Clarksdale, Midnight Moonlight from The Firm, Pride and Joy from Coverdale Page, The Truth Explodes, a.k.a. Yala, from Page and Plant, Satisfaction Guaranteed from The Firm, Please Read the Letter from Walking Into Clarksdale. That is the top ten songs according to Classic Rock Magazine. Um, now, here's what I came So, here's what I came up with for... This is my Jimmy Page list. Um... And, and I've given you the, the, the stuff that I missed, right? But this is my birthday list for Jimmy Page. Radioactive from the firm. All the King's Horses from the firm. Satisfaction guaranteed from the firm. And Midnight Moonlight from the firm, which is uh, it's something I like. It's, it's one of those Jimmy Page really works the guitar thing. From Outrider, Wasting My Time in the Only One. Uh, from the firm, Someone to Love. Sorry, I missed that one. Um, from... Um, from the BB Sess, I, I, now mine had Led Zeppelin in it too. You know what? I'll skip that. I'll skip that for now. Let's let's go to the non-Zeppelin, right? So I got Yala from from uh, Page and Plant and Gallows Pole, uh, which I think that's a it's a kind of a cool version. Now I I was gonna go with the Gallows Pole in the third album, which is a better version. But you know, you play these head games with yourself. I had about four songs from the third album already. So I says, ah, okay, Gallows Pole. And I do like what the way he works it with the 12-string. So, please read the letter from Walking to Clarksdale. Shake My Tree from Coverdale Page. Pride and Joy and Easy Does It, all both from Coverdale Page. Uh, this was uh, one that um, Wyatt mentioned as a pre, pre um, Zeppelin that I had missed completely. Bex Bolero. Uh, and and yeah, that belongs anytime, right? You can also, you know, you get into the studio, the really basic studio stuff. You can do something like the Joe Cocker, um, and with a little help from my friends. Um, but you, you're gonna be, you know, you get into the studio stuff, and then you're getting into so much material, and so you know. But yeah, you could do throw that in and Goldfinger. <laughs> yeah, what the heck, right? And uh, somebody misses the Tom, one of the Tom Jones. It's not unusual, I think it was. If she's a lady, one of those songs. Yeah, that's okay. I'll take that. Um, I got Roy Harper's The Same Old Rock on this. And uh, to be honest, I don't really know the song. I've never I've never seen the album Stormcock. Never seen it anywhere. I have been looking for it. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to get my hands on a version of it. But it'll take time. I'll find it. Um, but I did. I hit the internet and I downloaded it. I, I hadn't done that up until now. Um, so I got the same old rock now. Uh, I'll, I'll give it a good listen. I really, other than than what he did on Roy Harper's um, uh, the birthday celebration thing, I really don't know that song. And I think I've seen the video of it and stuff. But uh, so <clears throat> I'm gonna give that a listen. Give that whole album a listen. Uh, I got the train kept a rolling from Live Yardbirds featuring Jimmy Page. Now. I, you know, I kind of trying to keep to the more common stuff, and I get that most of you don't have that, but I do. I have the album, and it's an official release. At least it was for a little wee time. So, um, um, and you know, there's rumors of uh, that that the Yardbirds have talked about re-releasing that, and Jimmy's actually into it. You talk about him doing the archives. Wonder if, um, wonder if that early, that Yardbirds album, if he would like to get it out the way he would like, you know, make the. Uh, Take this crowd noises out and crap and stuff. Anyway, I also have White Summer from Little Games. And Good Night Sweet Josephine. As, and that's a single that the Yardbirds released, the Jimmy Page one. And it was re-released for Record Store Day a couple of years ago. And then, in, in my conversations with Wyatt, uh, we talked about Yugula. Jugula. How would you pronounce that? Um, um, but yeah. It, and, and, and I kind of thought, geez, it's, it's another one of those albums that's never really... Uh, sat on me, you know, I, you had listen to him go, yeah, okay, yeah, whatever, um, and so I put it on last night for a good listen, uh, look, here's the album here, and if, if I had the cameras going, I'd show it to you, um, and I ended up pulling two songs off it, and Hangman and Elizabeth, now there's a couple others that could work, um, you know what, you know what, this is another one, Jesus Roy Harper's a lousy singer, <laughs> at least on this one he is, um, not, and not, not control lousy, not a punk lousy or Neil Young type lousy. Just a lousy singer. He really has an uninteresting voice and uh, um, marginally in tune most of the time. And it really, I, I, it does he does nothing for me as a singer in this album anyway. And uh, but when you when you ignore that and dig into the what's going on there, Jimmy Page playing some nice guitar work on this, some nice acoustic guitar work in here. 
And I thought Hangman and Elizabeth were a couple of the best. Frozen Moment also. And that's kind of, you know, kind of the, the middle section of this thing. Hangman, Elizabeth, Frozen Moment, 20th Century Man are probably the four best songs. And they're in, you know, they're in the middle of the whole thing. Uh, so yeah, Hangman and Elizabeth also made the list. Um, and then we get into the Led Zeppelin stuff. And this is a, li- this is a lot trickier because I-, I could just go every one of them. And I'm trying to knock it down. I'm trying to wear it down a bit. So, so here's kind of what I came up with. And I'm looking at it now. And I know I'm missing so much stuff. Trust me, I know I'm missing stuff. Um, and, and, and probably as I'm doing this, I'm going to go, oh, Christ, I, I can't believe I didn't put that. But I just kind of rolled through it fairly quickly. And, and I came up with What Is and What Should Never Be from uh, BBC Sessions. I love the slide solo in that. And I love that version of it. Um, it was one of my first Zeppelin live experiences uh, was hearing that on the radio. Um, here in Toronto, Q107, Q107 used to play it probably about every six months, and I actually recorded it on my 8-track, and I used to listen to it. And then years later, well, years, well, you know, into the 80s, uh, a buddy of mine had uh, had it on cassette. And this is this is the version that, ha- you know, it has this song, it has Stairway to Heaven, has um, Going to California, I'm trying to remember what else I remember. Definitely there was a whole lot of love. And we used to listen to it driving around in his, uh, his Chevette. Um, and BTO fans will remember... Um, their manager, Bruce Allen, when he was managing BTO, had a uh, famously had a silver vet with gold wheels that he would cruise around town in. Well, we used to cruise around town in a gold chivette with white walls. So um, that's where that's where we were at. But this is what we were playing. Um, so yeah, I, I've always liked that particular version. I always liked that song anyway, and I love the little guitar solo in it. And uh, so that got there. Cashmere from Celebration Day. This is a tough one because well, you just pick Cashmere from anywhere, right? Um, cashmere, 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 or cashmere. You could have gone with the uh, page of plants. You could have gone with the original. Um, if you wanted to dig into the bootlegs, you could have gone with you know something there. Uh, wearing and tearing from Coda. Uh, just because it's got that hot little lick. It's not necessarily my favorite song, but it's a Jimmy Page day, so it's that hot little lick, you know. Over the hill, so far away. Same thing. It's a song that I kind of I can take or leave at the best of times. And, uh, but it's got a great, you know, that's Jimmy Page at his best on, on the acoustic guitar too. Fool in the Rain, uh, love the guitar solo on Fool in the Rain, by the way. That's, and a great song. Good Times, Bad Times, and Since I've Been Loving You is fairly self-evidence. Evidence. Out in the Tiles, um, which is just, it's a, it's, it's a hot little guitar lick and it's a, it's a great groove and it's a favorite song. So, hey. My list out on the tiles is on it, and that's the way. Which is to me, Jimmy Page on the acoustic at the best. Um, this, you know, the third album is the one I, I think I've talked about this before. I fell in love with Led Zeppelin on the third album. That was the one, and I, I could, I could live without <laughs> Immigrant Song ever being on that album. It's only really in the last ten years I've grown to appreciate Immigrant Song. I always kind of bypassed it, or it was, you know. Look, my parents come in the room and go, I'm screaming like a monkey. An immigrant song was the one where he screams like a monkey. You know, it, it's, it was, I could always live without that one. Um, but it, it was, you know, and, and it's a uh, whole other tangent here. But, you know, when people talk about, you say you're a Zeppelin fan, they go, oh, you must, you know, oh, they start talking about Black Sabbath. And you think, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm a Led Zeppelin fan. I love That's the Way and Out in the Tiles and Since I've Been Loving You. Not friggin' paranoid. You know, they're two different worlds. And anybody who compares those two worlds drives me nuts. See, you know, listen to the third album and then come back to me and talk about Black Sabbath. So, but that's my, you know, um, that's where I, the album that made me go, oh, these guys are incredible. Um, uh, From the fourth album, Battle of Evermore, Black Dog. And, you know, this is a, you could do almost every song, and you could just put that album on. Say the best of Jimmy Page, in a way. Um, so I went with. The, I love the Battle of Evermore, the Bandolin on it, and Black Dog's just hot licking. Could have been rock and roll. Could have been Stairway to Heaven. Could have been. Could have been Four Sticks. Great guitar part in Four Sticks. Could have been. Um, you know, going to California. That's a sweet acoustic guitar piece. Could have gone with them and Levy Breaks. I mean, you just. 
sometimes you have to just choose right same goes for um, physical graffiti how which ones so night flight is one i just love and in my time of dying is probably and jimmy at his finest uh, you know it, in to a degree anyway soulful best right the artist at work is in my time of dying um, Achilles Last Stand is an astounding guitar piece. You can't not put that on in a tribute to Jimmy. And I probably could have put another song or two from, from Presence, but chose not to. And then live uh, from Celebration Day, uh, Rock and Roll and Celebration Day. Sorry, not from Celebration Day, from Song Remains the Same. Rock and Roll and Celebration Day. And again, could have gone Song Remains the Same, could have gone into Days of Confused, but it's it's just too long for my... Uh, and could have gone into... How the West was won. Yeah, I picked a few things out of that. Heartbreaker, maybe out of that, but I didn't. Um, you know, you're trying to you try to make it a list that you can throw out and play too, right? And I, and that's 36 songs. So that's where I stopped it. But yeah, there's there's so many others you could do, isn't there? Um, again, almost all of presence from a guitar player perspective is astounding. Um, almost all of four you could play. Almost all of three I could put on. Even an immigrant song nowadays I, I could take. Um, it's like a clinic and how to play various types of guitars and banjos and mandolins. Um, so, so you could, you know, you go on and on and on. So that was the way, that was my little list. Um, uh, but hey, head over to the Facebook page, find the post, put your list. What did you listen to on Jimmy Page's birthday? Um, that's what I came up with. And, uh, um, and you know, I, I know I'm missing stuff. I'd love to hear what I haven't mentioned one way or the other that, that you think is missing, especially from the non Zeppelin stuff. I know that I missed a lot of Zeppelin stuff. I know, you know, I know you could go into the whole, lot of, and, and I've explained this, right? We, it's already 36 songs long. Um, I, you know, there's just so much missing. I get that. If you think something really belongs to be there and I missed it, if you think you can't do Jimmy Page tribute without communication breakdown or babe I'm babe I'm gonna leave you or carousel Ambra or something uh, by all means mention it but but really I'm more interested in the the outside of the the you know the yard birds and then after the post zeppelin um, yeah go over there and and, and do it um, and, I, and I'm gonna put up another one I think maybe now maybe right now I'll do this I'll post another one in the next day or two anyway Asking, what's his best studio work? What 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 would you pick as his best his best studio stuff? And I would go with the Joe Cocker. Some of the Tom Jones stuff are fun songs, um, and he's playing in those. Some of those other stuff, he's just he's barely playing, right? He's just kind of strumming along or something. Um, so it's hard to pick, you know. But so what, what is his best? Either a his best work or best the best songs that he worked on in the studio. You got to go Goldfinger. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta go, um, you know, and then you get into the argument about the who, do, you know, is, is it can't explain it on the list. And there was my microphone being all funny again. But anyway, I'm, I'm checking out now anyway, so not worried too much about my microphone. Um, so that was it. That was uh, Ramble On Radio, episode number 43. Uh, download us on iTunes. Go to iTunes and leave... A, uh, leave a review. Go to Spreaker and follow us, and listen to us on listen to me on Spreaker. Go to uh, uh, a YouTube. I am Brian Dammit, and uh, and and you can and you can well you can listen to them. You can't really watch. I'm. I, it's not a video of me doing it. I, I tried that once or twice, uh, and I spent all sorts of time just organizing the video, and I just ah oh, screw this. Um, I might try it again. It seems like a logical place to go, um, but we'll see. We'll see. I don't want to get locked into that. Um, 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 follow us. You know, find Ramble on Radio, the group on Facebook, and uh, you have to. It's the way these things work. You have to ask permission. But I, as long as you have a Facebook profile that's not ten minutes old, um, you know, if I see your friends with a lot of the people on the, that are already in the group and stuff like that. Well, if I just see a profile that's that's there that's that I know is not spam, I'm 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 allowing you. Um, it's, there's nothing like that going on, um, but but you have to. It's just a Facebook thing. You have to you have to actually ask to be. Uh, I'll get to that fairly quick and do it. And you can follow me on Twitter. 
Um, easy peasy. It's uh, Ramble On Blog, I believe, is uh, is the handle I use. Um, I should check it, shouldn't I? Uh, Ramble On. You can search Ramble On Radio. You can. It's at Ramble On Blog. But uh, I go by the name Ramble On Radio. Search either one, uh, and you will find me. And um, uh, I, th- I think I've got it all. There's so much now, eh? There's so much. That's it. It was nice talking to you. I will see you next week for episode number 44. Happy birthday, Jimmy Page. Happy birthday, John Paul Jones. Uh, and go out, get your Robert Plant tickets. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And next week, I think we're going to talk about the movie, the uh, documentary Robert did. That's the plan. That was the plan this week. But uh, when once the birthday came up, I kind of realized I got to talk about Jimmy at 70. So um, that's it. I will see you next time. Thank you for listening to Ramble On Radio to switch off the internet on Twitter all the, all the, he's way on top of this sort of stuff like you wouldn't believe um, now of course he posts just a lot of selfies of people with Jimmy Page and stuff which um, I wouldn't I wouldn't put on the website but Twitter's a different beast and he's running a different show over there so that's that's what makes it all interesting right uh, and believe me he's full of news James Cook is the guy who runs Led Zeppelin News on Twitter and believe he's full of news he's He's on top of things. He seems to know some people. He seems to get some back inside information pretty quick. And he doesn't miss. If something hits the internet, he doesn't miss it. He's got it really fast. Uh, which, which tells me that on Twitter, people are kind of sending him links going, hey, check this out, check this out. Um, he's on top of things. All right. So happy 70th birthday, James Patrick Page. Jimmy, to his friends and fans, um... He turns he turns seventy on uh, on the ninth Thursday the ninth. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what day this is because it's really close to when I did the last one. But um, uh, I posted on his birthday on, on on the Facebook page. What would you do? I decided to do a instead of what well, you know you're going what album you're going to listen to. I'm going to make a a playlist on my iPad. The best of you know a best of Jimmy. And uh, so I posted on Facebook, and I, and, and I kind of said Zeppelin and post Zeppelin. Forgotten all about the yard, but there's Thursday or Friday, and the cork is is now it's a nine hour trip because you got to go to Dublin across. So for the trucks, right, got to go to Dublin, shoot across into Wales, and then down to Glasnevin. But you look at it as the crow flies; it's right across the uh, Celtic Sea. It's just uh, it's probably. If you can get a direct flight, I assume Cork and Glasbury, both of airports, you know. If you can get a direct flight, it's probably about a 20-minute flight. It's really close. So, um, even a direct boat is probably just a couple hours, you know. Um, so, so who knows, maybe he could, you know, but I, I wouldn't expect that. Um, that's the only thing he's got on that weekend, too, is Cork. So maybe he pops up at Glasbury. I wouldn't expect it. Maybe he's a, a fan. Uh, he's also hitting Japan for two dates. That was in August. And he was talking about uh, North American dates as well. Nothing announced. There's more dates coming. There's, there's lots more coming. I haven't even checked today if they've released new. They were, there was talk about them releasing new dates as things go. Uh, so that's, that's new in Robert Plant's world. Um, and I'm, I'm having a quick peek at the, the Twitter here to see if... You, know, you got to follow Led Zeppelin news the next day. Uh, so I guess I guess me talk me going on about it um, pressured the plant camp to to release details. That's that's what happened, folks. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. They don't admit it. They won't answer my emails. But boy, they're paying attention. So anyway, he's, it, it starts in the middle of June up in uh, northern Europe, um, Sweden. I think I don't have the dates in front of me. And it actually runs through to a stop in Glastonbury, believe it or not, in but not the festival. In August, the Glastonbury uh, um, Abbey, or I was wanted to say cathedral, but Abbey, which actually looks like a really good, it's, a, it's an all, it's a, it's part of the festival. It's funny, eh? the festival is the end of June. The Glastonbury Abbey festival is in August, but they are part of the same group of festivals, um, like Glastonbury Inc. <laughs> or whoever puts this on puts on both. And if you go to the Glastonbury website for the festival, they do have a, a part of their website it focuses on this 
uh, festival. So Robin Plan is appearing at Glastonbury this year, but not the big festival, the little festival two months later. Um, but he is that weekend. However, it's worth noting that weekend he is playing in Cork on, I think, the Friday. It hurts, actually. Um, but what I didn't want to get, I kind of was ignoring the pre up because I didn't want to get into the studio stuff. Now you're getting into looking, you know, and then people would be saying, oh, you're going to look, you're going to find this song. Uh, you know, some obscure song somewhere. Um, but, you know, but uh, um, Wyatt, actually, Wyatt Brake uh, posted a list and he kind of pointed out the Yardbirds, uh, things like Stroll On. Can you get Stroll On? I, that's a because I was looking for stuff for the official releases. And I know Jeff Beck played in um, in um, uh, Train Kepper Rolling, which is what Stroll On really is. And Stroll On, they played it uh, in the Fellini movie, uh, Blow Up. Uh, but there was some licensing issues or something, so they couldn't play Train Kepper Rolling, so they played Stroll On. Or for you aficionados, Tall Cool One. <laughs> and, uh, um, <clears throat> but uh, Wyatt, listen. So can, I don't know. Can you get that one? Um, I'm not sure if that's true or not. If you can. But uh, anyway, yeah, stroll on. I'm, you know, the Yardbirds. I ended up adding the Yardbirds to my list. Um, I had nothing from uh, Death Wish Two on my list. Um, one I say what ho, this is Brian, call me James Patrick Gardner, and you are listening to Ramble On Radio, episode number 43, the only Led Zeppelin podcast on this or any other known internets. And you can listen to us on, on, on iTunes, you can subscribe on iTunes, leave, leave, a, uh, um, uh, leave a review. If you go into iTunes, leave a review, helps out. You can listen to us on Spreaker. You can check us out. Uh, check it out on YouTube at I am Brian Dammit, um, and uh, uh, Spreaker I think might be under that same handle, or might be under Ramble on Radio. I'm not sure. Like us on Spreaker. Um, like us uh, by us, I mean me. <laughs> it's, I do it all. Uh, like on Spreaker, and uh, also on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, um, and uh, occasionally I post stuff and I let you know when there's updates, and, and follow me on Twitter as well. Uh, I'm there, and I respond to people, and and that's that, that, that. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Jimmy Page today, but uh, first off, Robert Plant announced a bunch of tour dates. Um, I talked last time a bit about what's up for 2014, well, not a bit, it was about what's up for 2014, and significantly, Robert Plant, there was some tour dates thought at the time that were unofficial. He made them official 